Oh, right. Is buying a house right now a good idea? We'll cover some of the situations you may be in and we'll get you the answer at the end. Uh, you know, I'll give you a hint here. Uh, it's maybe uh, depending where you're at, where you want to move and what your in particular situation is. Okay, what else do we need to cover? Oh yeah, um, uh, subscribe right here and like this video if it's any good. Okay, into the slides. So the first thing we would ask is, are you required to move? There's some market conditions right now that are uh, pointing towards home prices being less expensive in the future. Uh, the market moves in cycles. It's like a wave. It goes up and down. And uh, we're, we're like right about here at the top of the wave right now. And uh, the, some of the government actions are forcing the wave to get higher into a tidal wave that ends in in what we like to call a foreclosure. Are you okay paying more? You need to ask yourself this depending where you're moving. We'll go through a couple different charts. In these charts it'll show a hot housing market or two and it'll show a cooled off housing market. And then right now, uh, one good thing you have going for you is historically low mortgage rates on 30-year fixed rate financing. I don't recommend being a cash buyer. Uh, there's another video on why they pay you to take a mortgage right now. Maybe I'll link that up here. I don't know. We'll see if it's up there. Go ahead and click that and add it to your queue or whatever that does. All right, I'm tired of this slide. Next slide. So this slide asks, are you required to move? If you're not required to move, depending on your situation, it may be better to hang out a little bit in wherever you're at. We'll go through some prices today versus tomorrow. Maybe you can rent temporarily a six month lease a uh, month to month lease you know it it kind of uh depends where you're at and how much you're paying. But if you're paying a couple thousand dollars for rent right now for your family, uh, in six months from now, that'll cost you 12 grand overall. Well, if house prices are going to drop by 30 or $40,000 in the area you want to go to, it may make sense to rent temporarily. Okay, we'll go to a Fred chart of prices today and what they may be tomorrow. This isn't financial advice. I need to tell you that. I have no idea what's going to happen. I'm not a fortune teller. If you listen to anything I say, you're going to lose all your money. You're going to throw it away. You might as well flush it down the toilet. Uh, grab your cell phone or whatever you're watching this video on. Break it and uh, then, you know, put it through your paper shredder and throw out the paper shredder. Okay, here's the chart. So this is the Fred chart, right? It goes from 1965 all the way through to the present. Uh, we can see that there was kind of a bubble here. Uh, that's what a bubble looks like. It's a big round thing. I'll, I'll probably put a picture up there of what a bubble is. Uh, then we hit a recession and it pops the bubble and the house prices crash. And that was the great financial crisis in 2008, 2009. Came out of it and house prices, home prices went up. And now they're just kind of chitter chattering along here since 2018. And we can see there's a little gray bar right here. I'll zoom in. Uh, right, right here, there's a gray bar. That's a recession that we're in. And you can see the home prices, they're tracking falling. Now, uh, they use all kinds of data in this, uh, but what we'll see in a later graph or a later chart here is that, uh, you know, home prices are falling faster in you know, large priced homes in large cities, high priced homes in large cities, and it's probably affecting this data. So the price is crashing right here. So maybe we're going like this. This is where we're at right now. Uh, you know, maybe we're right here right now. Uh, don't know. Can't tell you. I'm not a fortune teller. Uh, all I can tell is there's a little gray bar forming right there for a recession. And that home prices may be doing this soon. So it'd be over here and then down on the graph. If I could draw an extra line, I would. Um, yeah, I don't know. Maybe I will. Here, hang on. Yeah, there we go. Now I can draw a line. So it did like this here before and uh, now like it's doing this here. Well, uh, if this is the bubble, maybe it's going to do this and then end up back here in uh, what is this? What is this right here? 2009 levels. 
Uh, maybe houses are going to retrace back to 2009. I don't know. I'm just telling you what the, what's going on on this chart here. Looks like we got a bubble like this. Here's our bubble. We're at the top of it, and it's going to burst and go all the way down. All right, we'll clear that one out of there and go back to this chart. So anyway, if this turns out to be a bubble, we're going to have some problems in the housing market coming up uh, in 2021, which is going to be somewhere over here off the chart. And we talked a little bit more about that in another video. It was our housing bubble today video. Check that one out. I don't know if I'll be able to link it. If I can, it'll be up here. Uh, if not, then uh, just look up B. Duggle on the YouTube and find our housing bubble today. Okay, back to our slides. So renting temporarily, if it ends up like, like we just saw right here, if it retraces back down, if the bubbles burst and it retraces back down, you're going to save some cash on a house you know i don't know it goes from like 320,000 right here down to 240,000 in 2009 if we retrace to that you know it's gonna be some good prices for you that's like i don't know 30 40 percent reduction in home prices i don't know if we'll see that much without a bunch of government intervention but that's what could be possible right now that means renting temporarily for the next six to nine months uh, may work out better for you than purchasing a home because you'll get a 30, 40, $50,000 discount on a property depending where you purchase. Then consider your location. Where are you now? Where do you want to be? So here's the deal, people. Uh, if we go over to a Tampa chart, it turns out it's not a Tampa chart. It's a Tampa, I don't know, spreadsheet. Okay, so what it's telling us is that if your location is Tampa and you're trying to move right now, your total inventory available today versus one year ago is 45% less. Your total price versus a year ago is 14% more. That is crazy. That is absolutely insane. It's probably going to be better to wait because that would indicate a bubble. All right, we'll compare this one to, um, I don't know, a similar city, New York. I'm just kidding. New York is not similar. Everybody's running from New York. So in New York City, you have high taxes. You have high prices. You can't make any money there. So single family home in New York City. Uh, inventory is up almost 25% in one year. That is crazy too. That's the complete opposite of Tampa. Everybody's running. Everybody's trying to get rid of their home. Look, the price compared to one year ago is down 15% on a million dollar house. That's $150,000. On a $10 million house, people are losing $1.5 million to sell their fancy $10 million New York single family home. That is dumb. That's what's happening. So if you're moving to New York and you have a couple million, now might be a good time to buy. Kind of depends on your location. That goes into our maybe. So as a maybe, you know, it depends on your location. Maybe you want to buy, maybe you don't. You got to kind of decide on that. I definitely wouldn't recommend purchasing a home in a quickly appreciating market. That is uh, probably not going to end well for you if uh, this bubble here bursts. This bubble right here. So depending on your location, you need to ask yourself, are you okay paying more for a home? Do you have to move? Do you not have a choice? You have to get out now? Well, then I guess you're okay paying for a home. If you're in a really bad area that's affected by, say, I don't know, the global sickness going on, or if you're in a bad area that's affected by the fancy protests that they're having that CNN says are mostly peaceful, even though the entire street behind the reporter is on fire, well, then you might have to move and you might be okay paying more. So prices in desirable locations. Tampa, for instance, are a lot higher right now. So, you know, you might want to consider that and you're probably going to end up not getting much appreciation in the future because it has done appreciated. 
suburban inventory. A lot of people are moving out of the big cities into the suburbs. So if you're going to do that, you may have higher appreciation in the last six months. And then when a housing bubble bursts, you might see yourself well underwater on that property. Consider that 2019 and 2020 appreciation. You can go over to one of these charts here. I'll talk about it in a second. We've got Tampa, we've got New York, we've got Orlando. Yeah, you can just go over to Movoto, that's M-O-V-O-T-O dot com, and uh, put in market trends for Orlando or whatever city you're thinking about moving to, and it'll tell you stuff like this right here. Orlando, negative 35% for inventory, about the same as Tampa, plus 5% for list price minus 29 percent for days on market if you see this right here that means it's gonna be competitive you're gonna have to put a bid in the first day on any property that's anywhere near reasonably priced so that's how you check that out that's movoto.com it looks like this right here right there people that's what it looks like all right enough of this slide next slide so for rates there's a couple different ways to go we do investment properties on this channel so you can be owner occupant occupied you can have an investment property uh, and then the other way to figure out and keep the lowest rate is to have a couple mortgage brokers on speed dial so for owner occupied homes right now we'll go over to a chart of interest rates and here's your mortgage rates for 30 year fixed 15 year and 5 1 arms I don't recommend those you're gonna end up with a balloon payment that's never good okay so for 30 year fixed rate mortgage we have oh what I back here in 98 it was uh you know i don't know the one was as 2000 up into eight percent then we drop down we've been continuing to drop down almost uh, every year since 1998 so what does it look like today we are looking at the lowest rates in history at 2.86 percent average now that's average right this isn't the lowest you can get if you have great credit and a great lender it's been reported that you can get as low as 1.99 percent on a 30-year fixed rate mortgage that is insane that is we buy a house right now that's why you're seeing everybody in tampa buy houses it's crazy that's your rates right now uh, now on an investment property you can add about one percent to one and a quarter percent to this number on a 30-year fixed rate mortgage that's the only thing we really talk about on this channel yeah this is uh less of a rate for a 15-year but then you don't cash flow on your properties, so you're not making any money. So at 2.86%, if we add 1% to that, we can reasonably get an investment property loan with 20% down for 3.86%. Honestly, you'll probably get it lower if you call around to these mortgage brokers right here. Uh, they'll probably come up with a rate of 3.5% or 3.7%, something lower than that, making your investment property super affordable. So anyway, if you do owner occupied, you can rent out a room as an investment property. It's called house hacking. You can also just live in it, fix it up, and then rent it out later. So maybe you want to do that during this period since inventory is so low. You might purchase a home as owner occupied and live in it for six months to a year, depending on your lending terms. This isn't financial advice, of course. Everybody has different loan terms. We want to check that out for what your owner occupied clause is. As owner occupied, you get a super low rate, which gives you a super low payment. So it might not be your dream home. It might not be your forever home. But you know what? In six months, as long as it's a good rental property, you can move out and rent it to somebody. As an investment property, those rates are going to make it super easy to get into a property, although you're going to have a hard time getting a good deal right now because everybody's buying everything. There's no foreclosures on the market. They're just now coming on the market. We cover that in another video. Foreclosures are just now coming on the market. That's why you're going to see a bubble burst in my opinion. There's no way they can stop foreclosures from coming on the market. What are they going to do? Buy all the properties? Is the government going to buy all the properties and move into them? I already said that on another video. It's not going to happen. The government is not a person. They cannot buy the homes and move into it. You can't just have some magical entity like a, uh, I don't know, fairy sprite. 
uh, that is the government moving in, spraying money all over the place like they've been giving to everybody this year to keep the asset prices inflated. So asset price inflation has been the stock market and home prices, as you can see in Tampa with a 14% increase in prices year over year. That is insane, like I said before. Alrighty, mortgage brokers. So you call around to a couple of them. You can just Google the area, Tampa mortgage brokers, Orlando mortgage brokers, New York City mortgage brokers. They probably live out of state now like everybody else because they're not making any money there. Uh, they probably moved down to Florida. So, uh, you know, they're, uh, might say, relocated located on their little Google listing there. Um, and if they're in Florida, uh, you know, they might still be licensed in New York. Don't really know. They might, you know, might still be able to do loans in New York, but then New York's going to tax them on the income. So they'll probably tell you no. So anyway, I'll probably get a tax bill from New York just from talking about them so much. Uh, so anyway, the mortgage brokers will find you the best rate. They want your business. They have been overwhelmed with refinances recently. But as far as new purchases, I think they're pretty ready to go. Um, they, they have a lot of bandwidth for that. So just give them a call. They'll give you a good rate on either owner-occupied or an investment property. Uh, and then you go from there. All right, next slide. So to conclude, is buying a house a good idea? Well, you know, uh, again, not financial advice. Uh, it is if you're required to move, if you have to, because the street outside your home is on fire 24 seven from peaceful protests. Or if there's a pan, can't say that word, um, sickness, sickness related uh, uh, closures and you really don't wanna live there anymore, well, then you're kind of required to move if everything in your neighborhood block or uh, within you know general area there is closed due to uh, government closures for not spreading the uh, illness. Can't say it will be demonetized, not that I'm monetized anyway. You'd have to click the little subscribe thing right here and like this video a lot uh, for me to get monetized, but don't worry about that. That's not what we're talking about. I'm monetized through real estate okay uh so yeah you might buy a house uh, if you're okay paying more you know some people are it's not necessarily a bad thing you may not care that the house costs an extra 15 percent this year it doesn't really matter if you're going to get into it at a low rate and it's affordable for you and then just think later on you can rent it out for cash flow hey or have a roommate move in depending on your situation you know if you have like uh you know uh, husband or wife and six kids and whatever you're probably not gonna have a, a like a roommate move in but you know in a situation like that where you're maybe renting something for two thousand a month and you could buy something and you have to get out of where you're at then yeah you know you could you could really help yourself out by doing that right now so i understand paying more it's okay in some circumstances but what i'm saying if you wait for the bubble to burst when all of these foreclosures hit the market you're gonna get a better price. If you're able to wait, you will get a better price. So our maybe for that, uh, this whole video here is, yeah, if you're required to move or you're okay paying more, go ahead and do it, that's fine. But if you, any other situation, you know, there might be something else that comes up that you, you have to move, but I think this pretty much covers a lot of it. But for any other situation, if you wait for the bubble to burst, you might save 30, 40, $50,000 on a home. You know, you might be able to pick up a foreclosure. If you're okay with foreclosures, wait till those come on the market. You're gonna be looking at December through January through next May for a ton of foreclosures to hit the market and this bubble to absolutely explode. Load. The other thing that might happen right now, you might find a motivated seller. You know, maybe their house is out of forbearance. Maybe they lost a job. Maybe their mortgage servicer is, uh, for some reason, somehow refusing to give them any more forbearance. Then they have to go. So they'll sell you the house. They might sell it at a discount to you. So yeah, if you're going to buy a house now, Find somebody motivated. Find something you can get a deal on that's 20% below market value because in a lot of these places like Tampa, the market's appreciated 15%. And if it drops 15%, you're underwater on your mortgage. So that'll pretty much do it for this video. We're gonna go back to our original slide here. 
I usually stop talking between slides so that I can switch over, but I didn't do that this time, so that'll be a pain in the ass to edit. So, is buying a house right now a good idea? Depends on your situation. If you're required to move, if you're okay paying more, then yes. If you want to buy a house, a single family home in New York City, then yes, they've already depreciated a ton. The price isn't going up anymore. Go ahead and buy now. You know, I guess it's lower than it was six months ago, so you're better off buying now than you were then. But I, you know, I wouldn't buy anything in New York City or New York State or California or Los Angeles, San Francisco, whatever. I would not purchase anything in those states because they're going to rip you off on your taxes. You don't want to be in that situation, people. Look, if you live in New York, move over to Vermont. Move down to, I don't know, whatever's below New York. Virginia's down there. Move over to Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania's right there. The tax burden is nowhere near as bad as New York. Move to Florida. There are no income taxes statewide in Florida as of today, September 15th, 2020. Um, there may be in the future, depending uh, you know, how the whole uh, sickness and loss of uh, revenue goes for the state. But you know, we'll see what happens. That will require some pretty big changes down there. But anyway, consider all of that. You don't have, if you don't have to move right now, this bubble is going to go pop. And it's going to be good for you as a home buyer, as an investor, as somebody who wants to make money on real estate. In these other situations, you may not make any money on the house, but you may have to move into it. So it may be your only choice. Okay, there should be a subscribe right here. Uh, there should be another video right here. Uh, go ahead and like this video if it was any good. I know we put a couple of little, uh, you know, I don't know, squirrels and stuff, uh, little pictures up throughout it. So that was a lot of work. Um, but all right. Hey, thanks, everybody. Y'all have a good day.